One of the cooler features of modern internet search engines is the support for rich snippets or structured data. You may have noticed that in Google search results you begin to see a lot of additional information with particular listings. As an example here, you can see that this listing shows a series of upcoming events below the listing, complete with links directly to the pages that have been referenced. And this is a very useful and powerful way for events to connect into your website or for you to connect in reviews, recipes, all types of different content. So what I want to show you is a simple way that this can be done with Webflow. The implementation I'm about to demonstrate is a little bit outdated. I'm using an older approach. But as this continues to expand, you have a lot of different options on how you can create that rich data. And there are a few key tips I can show you on how to prepare your data in a way that will be supported. So taking a quick look at rich snippets and what's provided, Google apparently offers support for a number of different formats, which you can research and look into independently to find the one that best suits your needs. And they include microdata, microformats, RDFA. One of the more popular ones I've worked with is at schema.org, which is the uh, which is the microdata format. And there also is a format called JSON LD, which is becoming extremely popular as well. So you can choose the format and style that suits your, your uh, programming experience and the type of data you like to work with best. The simplest format for events management I found is somewhat akin to, um, to the iCalendar format where you express things as V events and event types using class names on standard HTML tags to identify and mark up your data. So for the crude demonstration here, I'm going to demonstrate uh, that particular example here. And the basic process, this particular one is schema.org, which is microformats. Now they use slightly different class wrappers and names than what I'm about to show you for this particular format, but the concept is similar. You would establish class names which are going to be looked for by Google as recognized um, by Google as marking up data. Now here's an example of a website in which I've implemented events and you can see here in the footer there is a list of events which are generated in a collection list and in fact I've got the Google Calendar plugin currently running on this instance of Chrome which is why you see these funky little calendars next to it because even Chrome recognizes that these are events that I may wish to add to my calendar. So it's provided a little ugly looking little button there uh, for my convenience as a user of this website. Now if I look at the source code for the page, you can see down here, I've already scrolled down to the footer here, and you can see there are certain structures and classes and tag structures such as an abbreviation with a class of DT start and a particularly formatted title, which is going to be the specific date time structures needed, uh, links and details. Uh, these classes that it's looking for are very specific structures like V event event, which I would then specify as I'm creating them in Webflow. And I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like. But you can see the basic structure here is that it's got start times, it's going to have durations, it's going to have titles, and so on and so forth. So your chosen format, you'll either be using classes or, for example, you met, example manufacturing JSON data, which can get picked up by Google for that purpose. Now, uh, there are a lot of different things you can mark up. For this example, we're going to talk about events particularly because they're quite a simple structure, but there are a lot of things you can do and there are a lot of new things coming out quite regularly. So let's take a look at what's going on inside Webflow. I'm in this footer here and I've got my I've got my collection list wrapper. I've got my collection list items inside here. So I'm going to select an item. And a particular item I have wrapped in a div 
which I have assigned a selector class to, so it will generate a V event with a subclass of event. This was necessary to create that V event event structure on this particular item. Now, there's going to be quite a few other pieces of data in here as well. We're going to have the titles and so on, uh, which are also going to get picked up. And you can do that such as it's looking for classes such as summary. And when you look at your particular microdata format that you're using, it will specify exactly what class names you need on each of the pieces of data that you want to specify. Since that's constantly in flux, I'm not going to walk you through that in extreme detail. There is one very important thing that I want to demonstrate, and that is the date formation. Because one of the challenges I had in implementing this was that Webflow does not natively provide a means for me to output my date time in a format that is that is required by most microdata formats. But it turned out there was a way around that and I did that inside my vEvent structure here using an HTML embed. Now if we take a look at the content in that embed, you'll notice something very strange here, I'm very funky and ugly looking is that I needed to create this abbreviation class DT start with a title containing the particular ISO formatted date that's needed for internet date times. Now this is simply the start date of my event but I needed it formatted differently. Now it turns out there was a particular way to do that which I wanted to demonstrate for you. If I add uh, a an event tag and if I add start date for example you'll see here is my my webflow editor and I'm looking at the start date but what webflow has done is condensed that for my convenience from a user interface perspective I can actually modify that now I can't do much here I can change the type I can't do anything else to the field itself however if I copy this field and I open, say, Notepad, and I paste that field in, you can see that it is actually this rather interesting uh, double-braced command structure with, with uh, WF at the beginning and then a bunch of, of, of additional data. And you can see in here there is a particular date-time format in this section. Now it turns out you can change that as I have done here. Now the date time format that I have used is a particular one needed uh, on the internet by these data type formats and it looks like this. Year, year, four digit year, two digit month, two digit day with a T, hour, minute, seconds, and a Z indicating the, uh, the UTC time zone. So it looks like this, this particular time format. Now I can simply replace the one here, which Webflow has defaulted to, can paste that in, and I can take this entire thing and paste it in back into the HTML code editor. Now because I'm pasting it in from outside, it's going to look a little funky. Now Webflow has marked it up specially, you can see it's highlighted it in red. It, it appears to recognize that this is an internal Webflow tag. However, it couldn't identify it or compress it properly. So in a way, this is the most beautiful situation possible. Webflow continues to chug on, but allows me to meddle a bit. Now, the big question mark here is, how long will this be supported? This is clearly an undocumented uh, approach that I've taken to get the specific date time format that I need. However, it does work. It has been working now for the better part of a year and, uh, and I've had no problems with it. So you may find this to your advantage as long as you can accept the potential fragility of this approach. That's only advisable to you if, 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 you, uh, if you're prepared to have an emergency backup plan in case it suddenly disappears on some Webflow iterative release. So this is the approach that I use to generate the date time formats that I need, embed them into my format, and publish the exact microdata format code that I'm looking for for my site. And once that's done, I simply step back 
And within a couple of weeks time, Google picks it up and begins publishing uh, the events uh, with times and links and everything quite nicely uh, in the search results listings.